we call the meeting to order. This is a meeting of the Conservation Commission uh, of Northampton for the uh, 26th of May. Um, uh, the commission is a group of unpaid volunteers that uh, has the responsibility for uh, 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 implementing the Wetlands Protection Act and the city wetlands ordinance. Uh, we're also responsible for open space management and acquisition. Uh, we operate in ways that are consistent with open meeting law requirements. All meeting dates, times, and agendas are posted in advance. We invite public comment during our meetings. However, we ask the public to limit their comments to the issues that are within our purview. Uh, then I also normally uh, recite the agenda, but I, I don't have that in front of me. Um, uh, but we have several hearings today and a couple of uh, uh, certificates of compliance that don't require a public hearing. Um, and since the, uh, the, the, the first case um, is that the applicant has asked for a continuance. Um, so uh, uh, first thing we need is a, uh, uh, a motion to continue uh, that case. Uh, I don't know if they have a specific date that they've requested, Sarah. They did. So they requested June 9th. Um, and just in case they do need to request another continuance to wrap up um, some issues that they're having with acquisition of a property, let's do 545, just we can schedule around it. I see. Okay. Someone want to make a motion to that effect? So moved. And a second? Second. All in favor, Sarah, you need a roll call, I assume. We do. Uh, Alec? Yes. Kevin? Yes. Mason? Yes. Jen? Yes. Randy? Yes. Paul? Yes. And Jason? Yes. All right, unanimous, thank you. All right, and so while we're waiting for the 545 case, uh, we have uh, a couple of certificates of compliance. Uh, Kevin, I, rather than, than skipping to those, I thought it might make sense to use this time to introduce ourselves to, to Paul and have Paul oh, good idea. say hello to us as well. I forget it. Oh, I've known Paul for years. <laughs> so Paul, why don't you start with a little intro? Uh, um, so, I, I know Paul, Paul used to work with my wife and I've known him for a long time and he's a great outdoorsman, that much I know. So go ahead, Paul, say, let's say a little descriptive stuff about yourself. I've been a resident of Northampton since 1978. Uh, I was on the board of directors for Riverbend Medical Group for 19 years. And I'm the co-president of the board of directors for the Cutchins programs for children and families co-chaired with Jim Nash, our city council president. And on the board is Sally Deans Lake. So I get to work with her again. Um, and uh, I'm a member of the um, 4,000 Footers Club of the White Mountains of New Hampshire and the 46ers Club of the Adirondacks. So I've climbed all the peaks in the Northeast, at least in New Hampshire and New York. Um, but I'm not um, aspiring to the 111 highest throughout um, New England. <laughs> <laughs> I am semi-retired. I have a small clinical practice as a clinical social worker at 92 Main Street in Florence. So I, I work one day a week and I have six day weekends. <laughs> so that's, that's me. And I'm really happy to be on this. I, I feel like it's a chance to use my surplus time now to do something to give back to the community in a meaningful way when so many other political issues seem beyond my reach. Good, thank you. Why don't we go around and everybody just say a couple of words about, uh, uh, they're obvi you're obviously all members of the commission, but a little bit about what you will do other than that. And I can't see everybody, so we'll have to just uh, rely on Sarah, who does have gallery view, to kind of go in some kind of order calling on people. Oops. You're muted, Sarah. There you go. Uh, uh, start with the top of my list. Uh, Jason, you want to start? Yeah, sure. Uh, hey, Paul, my name is Jason Perry. Uh, I'm an environmental scientist. I work for an engineering and consulting firm. So I do a lot of uh, environmental type work professionally. Um, so this is right up my alley. Um, I've been on the commission for five or six years or so, as I recall. Um, I live in Florence. Great. 
Well, let's see. And Randy? Uh, yeah, okay, there we go. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm Randy Kotowski. Uh, I'm relatively new to the area. I moved here in 2015, I think, September 2015, and ended up building a house in Northampton. Um, my background, I'm a chemical engineer by degree, spent about half my career engineering and operations, including a lot of environmental remediation work at the time. Um, and then ended up in IT, which has nothing to do with the Conservation Commission, but uh, avid outdoors person, not, not a climber, but uh, kayaker, canoeer, hiker, camper, oh. um, anything I could do out the, outside is just uh, is what I love to do. Nice. All right. And uh, Kevin, I, I know you all know each other, but it's always good to get a well, recap know, of, of the other things. We know like each other. I, I, I've been retired for a long time now uh -huh. um, since I... I I did a little consulting after age 60, but only a little, and most of the last many years have been complete uh, retirement with lots of volunteer stuff and activities, including um, gathering a lot of old person camping gear so that I have the most comfortable chairs and camping tables and camping pads. And uh, I just got a, a, a sea tug uh, kayak uh, carrier, the, the roller, so we can portage that first we're going to uh, uh, Vila Lake in the Adirondacks in a couple of weeks and that you start with a third of a mile portage over pretty rough ground so I got yep. uh, a new carrier for that so but anyway Paul, Paul, Paul knows me from from many years so I'll, I'll stop there. Great. Um, Alec? Yeah hi Paul uh, Alec Bernstein. Um, I used to work at UMass as a water resource engineer and a, an environmental consulting before that. Um, COVID uh, changed that pretty quickly. And so I, I haven't actually lived in, uh, spent much time in Northampton for the last couple of years uh, since August, 2020. But prior to that, I was a resident since 2015. We still own some property there and love getting back when I can, but my work has called me elsewhere. Uh, so I'll, yeah, I'll be leaving the commission. Uh, so I believe you're taking over uh, my role. And so it's nice to meet you, but uh, I hope you'll carry on the torch uh, with great pride uh, going forward. So great. Good luck to you. All right. Um, Mason? Um, I've been on the commission for a few years. Um, <laughs> a few, how many, how many, many years is it now? They Mason? started them. Many thousands. Uh, 40? Well, in 2026, it'll be 50 years. Oh, wow. Holding out for that. <laughs> Well, um, I have a degree in wildlife biology, 67 from UMass. Um, I've taken almost all the uh, courses that uh, MACC has offered. Um, worked as a uh, wetlands consultant for a small engineering company in Westfield. And as far as the Adirondacks, I used to work there. Ah. The fisheries biologist for a couple of years up, up in New York. Nice. Working out of the Watertown office. Really nice up there. Okay. Great. Great. Thank you. And uh, Jen? Hi, hey, Paul. Nice to meet you. Um, hey. I'm kind of the odd duck of this group. My background is more in sustainable agriculture. Um, I've been farming off and on for about 20 years and I founded and ran Crimson and Clover Farm in Florence for many years. Um, and I now manage the local hero program at CISA, which is community involved in sustaining agriculture. Um, I also for five years kind of amidst my farming time worked as a, um, conservation project manager at Mount Grace Land Trust in the North Quabbin. So doing conservation deals and strategic planning, et cetera. So. Nice. All right. Thank you. Were we missing anybody, Sarah? Uh, just me. Uh, so I'll just, I'll, I'll just say I've been with the city of Northampton for 12 years and I really enjoyed all of them. Um, I also staff the Historic Commission and the Community Preservation Committee. Um, I really love working in local government. It's absolutely my passion and I'm lucky that I get to help do these things uh, day in and day out. And when I'm not working for the city, I'm an avid skier and hiker. Yeah, great. And it is a wonderful group of people and I'm glad to have you join it. Thank you. 
Right. And with that, I'll, I'll switch gears and move over to my Cooley meeting. And Mason, Gavel goes to you. Okay. Thanks for doing. All right. Thanks, night. everybody. See you soon. And we have, Mason. what, a minute to go? Yeah, so before you get started, I, I told Sarah that I have to drop off at 6.30. I think you have quorum after that. So I, if not, um, I'd come back and watch the uh, videos and, and be able to vote afterwards. But uh, it looks like you have quorum going forward. So yeah, we're in good shape. But in order to uh, vote on some of the other things, if you're not here, you should probably watch the tapes anyways. Yeah, well, I, I probably won't vote if we have quorum and, and you approve. Oh, okay, <laughs> unless they're continuing and it looks like yeah, anything that's continued, I'll, I'll pick up. Yeah. Okay, with that, we can go to the uh, first hearing on the agenda, which is a request for determination of applicability to determine if workshop expansion under an existing deck within riverfront area is subject to the Northampton Wetlands Ordinance and Wetlands Protection Act. And this is for Felix Harvey on 24 Carcelli Street. If there's someone here to represent him, uh, it's all yours. I'm, I'm Felix right here. Okay. I'm, I'm a, Felix Harvey here. Yep. So I want to explain the project a little bit. Um, oh, sure. Um, well, I hired a contractor to expand my shop and the building permit was referred to um, Conservation Commission. So that's what I'm here for. I put the application together myself. I drew up the plan and I'll just one comment because I was introduced as um, a shop going underneath an existing deck. Actually, 80% of it is under existing roof line. There's just a, a 20% 20, 20 of it is under a deck and the roof, a roof membrane will be installed under the 20% deck. So I just wanted to clarify that. So the workshop is being expanded on mostly under existing roof line. So this is what an extension of the cellar? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So it's slab, there'll be a slab, there'll be a couple of fairly short retaining walls. Um, so, and they have, we have to remove material and place it nearby, um, or at least that's what I'm hoping to be able to do. And, um, and that will help ease access into the shop expansion area by moving the dirt from where I want more headroom under my uh, building uh, and deck so that I can have a gradual slope pathway to get to it. And that's all I should all work out with the cut and fill nicely for me. Of course, I'm eager to hear what, um, I'm somewhat familiar with environmental stuff, um, but I'm eager to hear what I can do to help the process along here. Okay, on, on the plan, you show an area of filling. Is that a low area that you're gonna take the yes. excavation and excavated material and put in that area? Yes. In fact, part of that area that I'm filling, there, you, there was a, before I owned the house, I've owned the house for 28 years. And before, I, there, someone had a pool there so it's like it was an area that was excavated um, for a pool, but the pool's no longer there. And um, it's kind of a low area and it's all vegetated. Um, and my plan is to fill it in, put vegetation back and a pathway into my shop. Any questions from commissioners? Um, just a quick one. Are you going to be bringing any equipment in to do excavation? And uh... Yes, the contractor plans on using some small heavy equipment to work underneath my existing structure, like a uh, mini, um, mini excavator uh, yeah, type yeah. excavator, yeah. also a, a uh, small excavator. So both a, like a loader, Bobcat loader and an excavator. That's Lavalley. I believe it's Mark Lavalley doing the excavating. Oh, yeah. 
um, and we're going to push the loam out of the way and then put it back. Yeah. What's the general topography like between the work area and the Mill River? Um, a lot of trees, a lot of veg as well established uh, vegetation. Um, there's a couple of steps down. There's my neighbor's yard. I, you know, I measured with a 300 foot tape the distance. That's what's shown on the plan. I believe it's 160 feet. Yes. And um, so I went through my neighbor's yard, which is established. Um, neither one of us mow a lot in the back. Um, we try to keep it fairly natural back there with minimal mowing. And then there's a bunch of trees. And I tried to show that in the picture. I don't know if you, if you have the photograph there. I didn't mm. see one. No, I see the schematic diagram. Yeah, we just have the line drawing. Oh, I submitted a photo with the application, but I guess it didn't make it into your packet. But um, yeah, so it's a 35 foot elevation drop. I measure, I, um, looking at a topo map um, and it's 35 feet in vertical elevation above the river. Okay. So it's, it's, it drops off quite a bit to the river, but it's fairly well established river corridor. And yeah. Uh, do you do you have any plans for erosion control between the river and, and your work area? Well, um, well, to me, uh, uh, my background actually is in civil engineering, so I know a little bit about it. Probably enough to be dangerous, but um, there is well established vegetation, and I don't believe that um, the the vegetation is firmly established, and I. There's not, there's not really an area, of a ch there's no channel running through the water, waterway running through the site. Partly it's covered with roof. Um, there's no rain directly on it except for the 20% where the deck is, which is, of course, it's obstructed rainfall on the, the site of the excavation. So it'll be covered um, by roof and deck. So it's not direct impact. Uh, it's, the rain doesn't fall on it directly. And um, would you like to see some erosion control more than the, the currently existing established vegetation? Well, we're going to add it to the, probably add it anyways. Um, normally we would have erosion control, say between the, uh, the area that's, that you're going to fill in. So if you get a sudden rainstorm, that stuff doesn't wash down the slope, even though yeah. it's going to go into the vegetation. Yeah, I guess um, I haven't, I'll try to describe the slope because it's not a straight slope. It's like a tiered slope. Okay. So my, my house and my shop expansion area is like on a tier and then the vegetation extends out 10 or 15 feet and then it starts to drop off a bit and um so there'll be there'll be that sort of um buffer already that um, say if you want if if someone wants to see straw waddles i mean i could get some of that or um that probably the or hay bales or not hay bales but straw bales mm. And, um, but I, Felix, I think what do you think the total amount of material that will be uncovered at, at any given time will be and about how long will it be there? Well, it's 400 square feet. The shop expansion is 400 square feet. So then the, um, and that area will probably go into, um, a similar sized area. I, uh, you know, I'm sorry, I don't have my, I could probably call up my, um, plan i have it right in front of me here sorry about that um so 400 square foot that's obstructed by roof and deck and then there's say 
four to 600 square feet that would be the limits of the filling, although it's probably closer to an equal area or 400 square feet that will be filled. And then, but that's surrounded, like I said, by t um, a terraced um, vegetated area. So it's, it's away from the river. There's a veg flat vegetated area between the excavation, the filling, and then where the, it's down slopes. That I makes guess sense. My, 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 my question would be how many cubic yards are you gonna displace from the excavation and then move into the area you're proposing to fill? Okay, the, the, geez, um, geez, I should have done a calculation on that. It's about, um, let's see, um, let me do a quick calculation here. Um, two by um, Are you going to take take the deck down while you're doing this, and then rebuild it, or the deck? Well, the you know the twenty percent of the area is, is is a deck that will need a impermeable membrane. The tech, that portion of the deck has to be taken off so that we can install a membrane and it becomes roof. Oh, okay. So then it's all going to be covered eventually. Um, so 27 into 800 is um, 54. So my my dirty calculation, this is an overestimate, it's 28 cubic yards. And you estimate that all that will go into that low area and grade out and yes. match the round and, right, and be revegetated, correct? Okay. Thank you. I'm sorry to put you on the spot like that. No, that's it's a I showed up here, I get what I deserve. It's okay. <laughs> But, yeah, my, my only thought is it's probably worth putting a silt fence or a, um, some sort of erosion control just, just on, on around down. the fill area. Yeah, yeah, around the fill area, just in case you know, get a massive rainstorm and some stuff will start flowing. It probably won't make it all the way to the river, regardless. Um, but it'd probably be good to catch it before it gets too far. He's, I mean, okay, I, would, I, can, I can do that. Yeah, other than that, I'm, I'm comfortable. Properly with. installed silt fence work for you. Yeah. Okay, I can do that. Any other questions or comments from the commissioners? Any questions or comments from the public? Any of you listening in? I would just say that doesn't appear to be any detriment to the ecosystem. He's working well with his neighbor and there's um, quite adequate vegetative stabilization, at least from the description of the project. Um, I'm not sure what kind of vegetation uh, is there that would be most helpful for absorbing water flow. Would you like me to describe that? Yeah, may as well. This is where I wish the photo had been included in the packet. But um, there are quite a few trees. There's, and then there's established vegetation, which in my backyard is, uh, it's many different species. I'm not a lawn guy. I don't use chemicals. Um, so my yard is maintained so that it has many uh, variety of species mm -hmm. growing. Nice kayak. We have a picture up now. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, sorry, I'm an outdoorsman feels, as this, well. This page <laughs> fell off the application somehow. So you oh, can okay. see that Thank it, you. it's really, it's pretty unlikely for any of this excavated material to migrate that far. That's so an entrenched silt fence might actually cause a little bit more disturbance than, um, than it would prevention. Okay. That's kind of my opinion as well. I didn't want to be too pushy about it, but. Yeah, just in the, 
unlikely event you get a really big thunderstorm while this excavated material is out there, just maybe a straw waddle or, or something to keep it from drawing all over your lawn. Yeah, yeah I, I um, well, I'm going to be participating in the grading of it <laughs> and make sure they don't screw up my intent, which is to not be intrusive on the environment. Yes. And um, that's my objective is not to it's the last thing I want to do is create a problem with um, erosion or sediment transport. Yeah. Any other questions? Now I'll entertain a motion to um, close the don't we'll call it a hearing, do we? It's uh, it's, since it's an RDA, we don't need a, a formal closure. Oh. So you can, someone can move an action item instead. Okay, someone, um, what it was, yeah, suggestion. So uh, because this is riverfront, this would be a negative determination by checking box two, if the commission agrees that there won't be any alteration to the resource area. And uh, I'll be at um, erosion control around the, um, the fill site. I would, I would generally say put erosion controls just down gradient of the work area. Yeah. The place there's going to be disturbance. Okay, we can add that. So we um, on one to make a motion to approve. So moved. I'll second it. All in favor? Uh, Sarah? Alec? Yes. Mason? Yes. Jen? Yes. Randy? Yes. Paul? Yes. And Jason? Yes. All right, unanimous. Thank you. Hey, thank you. Thank you very much. Best of luck with your project. I've got, thank you. I got one quick question. Is um, the result of this meeting, the official minutes will be what I take to the building department to prove to them that this passed? So I'll send you a, a, a negative determination, Felix. Okay, and, perfect. And, and that's it. And there's no appeal period, so you can start work anytime. Thank you very much. Great. Good luck. Have a good night. Thanks for your good work. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Next on the agenda is a request for determination of applicability to determine the construction of three affordable homes within the buffer zone of wetlands is subject to the Northampton Wetlands Ordinance and Wetlands Protection Act. And this is for 278 Hertz Pit Road, which you check your notes, we also have requests for certificate of compliance for the same place. I assume you're here for that, Wayne. I'm here for the request for termination, correct. Yes. Um, so if you remember, we came before you, at least those of you who were on the commission, I lose track of time, so don't trust me for dates, a year ago, roughly, um, for an earlier request for determination so we could tear down the old house and garage was on the property. Um, we remediated the asbestos, we tore it down. Um, and then we worked with Habitat for Humanity, who's eventually gonna take title to this property within the next month. Um, they're gonna build three affordable homes. So it's our job to take this through permitting and then we're pass it on to Habitat and they'll be the ones who actually built the home. So we've been working with them on the design for the homes. Um, Sarah, do you, is it useful if I share my screen to show the plans or everyone has them? Everyone has them, but it, it might be useful just for everyone to see. Okay, do you wanna let me share screen? Yep, you should be all oh, set. Great. All right, thanks. Um, so again, you, you know, you, 
those of you who are here before saw the property before, this is part of the state hospital. It's an outlying piece. So all this area that's green on the plans is the ag land that we protected the state hospital 30 years ago, one of my first tasks for the city. Um, and we left out this parcel. It was originally went to the housing authority. They were gonna build a halfway home. That fell apart. The land reverted back to the state. The state gave a deed to the city for the property with a condition we make it for affordable housing. Um, hmm. And so we're now moving forward. And so it's it's part of the original scheme that 50% of the housing in the state hospital be affordable. We're this right next now. is a compost place? No. So I don't know if you can see my cursor, Mason, but these yeah. are the barns. This is where they used to compost restaurant waste. They don't anymore, uh, but that's what Smith Oak did. So we're just yeah. west of that. This is the drumlin that Yep. You could walk until recently, but it's now a bowl there, so don't walk there, but you can walk there again soon. Um, so it's the westerly most part. So it's pretty far west. Um, there's homes across the street for half the property. So it's not necessarily obvious that it's a state hospital. The home was used by the time on Department of Mental Retardation, it's a different name now, for a halfway house until roughly 12 years ago. Then it fell in disrepair. We tore it down because it had no value. Um, and um, so let me just jump here. So this is the overall site. Uh, actually, I mean, yeah, so I'm gonna zoom for, I'm sorry, I hope I don't make you seasick, but I'm gonna zoom in to see what we're seeing at the end of the day. So the idea is to build three homes. They're at an angle to, angle to maximize solar exposure. Um, yeah. We have strong incentives for solar exposure and habitat, not just because our incentives, but it's done a great job of providing solar. Um, and so three, depending how you look from a suburban standpoint, they are tiny lots. From an urban standpoint, they are huge lots. Like I live hmm. half a mile downtown and my lot's a quarter of the size. So it fits where they are, you know, at the edge of the state hospital. So the size fits that in-between area. Um, and uh, again, this may be more detail than you care, but I believe, in, and Megan's here, so she can correct me if I say something wrong, but they want one building that's one story, so it can be wheelchair accessible, and two buildings that are two stories because it's a smaller footprint and looks nice, but obviously, even these buildings will be accessible for visitors, but not necessarily residents, but this will be fully accessible. Um, and this is the, you know, the limit of work, the do not disturb area. Um, so I'm going to go back. Um, just because I heard this conversation with Felix. So this is an erosion control barrier around the edge of the work. So we're zooming out. Part of the property that goes with this lot, we're not touching. The city, you know, we get the pleasure when we own land. The city is retaining a 30 foot easement through here for stormwater. Right now, stormwater from Birch Pit Road sheet flows, that will continue. But if the city ever needs something, we have that 30 feet. Again, that would require future permits anyway. Um, but the only work we're doing now is within this area. We're, we're not doing any work within the resource area itself. So this is all buffer zone work. Uh, and we think with the erosion control barrier, we're not going to have impacts. Um, I do want to note that we are cutting up. The erosion control barrier is for anything we're removing soil. There may be some individual trees that get cut beyond that, but we won't be dragging them around. Um, we are below... This may not matter to you, but we also need a stormwater permit when we disturb more than an acre of land. We are below an acre of land, so we're below DPW stormwater. We'll be going before the planning board in 52 minutes for site plan approval, so they'll be reviewing the stormwater as part of that. Will any trees be removed when you're doing this? Yes, there are trees being removed. Let me see if I find that sketch. So th this is the sketch. So all these trees with axes are being removed. Many are small, a few are, you know, Quite, quite significant. Um, but beyond the barrier, if things are removed, they're sort of scrubby, you know, brushy things, the only significant trees you see here. It's five trees over 12 dBH within yep. buffer zone. Thanks, sir. And there's no designation of rare wildlife or endangered species. So that's an, a no. Okay. And we did, you know, Housing Authority, I'm going to turn this off so you can see me, but Housing Authority did a wetlands delineation when they were planning to build um, a, a halfway house, say, roughly 12 years ago. Um, 
And we went back, uh, hired, uh, you know, had the wetlands termination and it changed very minor, you know, within inches. Um, yes. The reason I, I point that out is if you happen to have been in this area 20 years ago, all this area behind our property um, was once farmed and the state let it go or Smith Oak let it go. It's now wetlands, so they've lost their pre-existing status so that that farming can't come back. But it's not that the wetlands grew, it's that they were just artificially draining and farming wetlands. The wetlands themselves hmm. are lost. Are, are these houses still in grade or is there a full basement? It can be slab on grade. Um, house, uh, 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 habitat does not do basements and they don't do garages. So you see there were little sheds. So that's because the tenants need someplace to store their stuff, but there's... <laughs> Any other questions from commissioners? Any questions from any audience that's watching this? Nope. Sarah, you want to go over your recommendations? Uh, so staff did assist with this application, so I didn't have a specific oh, that's recommendation. Right. Um, but I, I did note that the wetland boundary should be, con be confirmed because staff visited the site and have no issues with that delineation um, and noted that all of the work is being confined to previously disturbed and degraded areas and that the work is not touching that, um, the wetland or the buffer zone. To the west. Okay. Um, and the um, just one addition if you look at the total amount of disturbance within the limit of work area, it is slightly more than is allowed in the wetlands ordinance, but that includes all temporary disturbance as well. So the amount of permanent disturbance is much less than that. And this is uh, Megan McDonald with Pioneer Valley Habitat. Um, Wayne, you touched on the fact that we may remove trees beyond that limit of disturbance, but we would not be uprooting stumps or it would just be for solar access to, because there are some tall trees to the south there. Hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, what's up to the uh, commissioner if you're comfortable with a negative determination checking box three um, and someone needs to make that known yeah I'm, I'm comfortable with that it's a good use of the land doesn't seem to degrade, but it's already a degraded property any further. So does it impact my land? So I'm comfortable. What's your vote? I am too. That, that, that's a vote. And there is a second. Second. Okay, uh, all in favor? Um, Sarah? Hey, Alec? Yes. Mason? Yes. Jen? Yes. Randy? Yes. Paul? Yes. And Jason? Yeah. Great, unanimous. Thank you all very much. Good night. Uh, Good who's taking your place? Uh... <laughs> so the mayor's name, uh, Carolyn is acting director, and then she's going to do a search. Uh... Congratulations, Wayne. It's exciting. Thanks, yeah, it is exciting. A little we'll, scary. We'll miss you, though. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a little worried I'm going to wake up and come here just because that's my habit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I turned my beard just for you, Wayne. <laughs> See, I'm going to grow a beard just to oh, be like you when I grow up. <laughs> well, it was, it was that or um, I, I, I had a mild threat that um, another party in my house was like to uh, mop the kitchen floor with the beard um, while it was still attached to my face. So I... I decided, hey, now's the time to trim it. But that yeah, good luck sense. in your retirement. And uh, 
I don't know who we're going to get to get our land for us, so. though. <laughs> Sarah. Sarah's learning it all. She's going to be great. Okay. Great. Thank you all. Bye now. Thanks, Wayne. Thank you. Thanks, Wayne. Hey, Mason, Sarah, I'll, I'll drop off now. I'll, I'll come back and watch anything that get, has to get continued rather than sort of, because my guess is we're going to run a little bit past 630 on this next month. So um, I'd rather, I'm going to come back and watch the whole thing if I have to continue, watch it for continuation. But you have a quorum, so hopefully you conclude it. Thanks, Randy. Okay, thanks. Hey. Bye. Okay, next we have a notice of intent for remove, sorry, renovation of a garage uh, to be converted to residential units, parking lot, shed construction, and related stormwater improvements. And this is um, 95 Barrett Street. And I believe that's also subject of the certificate of compliance too. Yeah, so there's two related items for this one. There's the, the notice of intent and the um, request for certificate of compliance, which it would make sense to discuss at the same time. Should we do that first? Uh, I think concurrently. Let's let's proceed with the NOI hearing. Um, okay. Because they don't really make sense separately. And who's here for that? Uh, I'm here. My name's Doug Searle with uh, Berkshire Design Group. Uh, also uh, with me is uh, Carlos Nieto. Uh, and then also the owner of the property, Shaw Perry. Uh, so I'll begin. Uh, I realize I uh, try to keep things concise. Um, uh, first, uh, if it's possible to share my screen, Sarah, would that be all right? Give me one second. Sure. Oh, so easier than pinning it up on a board. <laughs> <laughs> Although we're going to get back to that. Let's see here. I am going to share uh, this one. Go, that should be sharing now. Okay. Uh, uh, so um, the uh, I'll first very briefly uh, discuss the certificate of compliance as it rolls from one uh, to the other. We are here tonight uh, uh, with a certificate of compliance application to complete uh, the notice of intent that was uh, uh, originally filed in, in 2015 uh, for uh, construction of uh, 12 residential units, a garage building uh, on the north uh, of this drawing, um, and uh, remodeling of one existing unit on this parcel of 95 Barrett Street. Uh, construction had, uh, it, it, along with this, was uh, a, 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 a two-way uh, looping driveway that went through with garage parking, exterior parking, sidewalks, um, a, uh, an open uh, space uh, for residents, uh, and uh, sidewalks throughout, and uh, outdoor vehicular, uh, bicycle parking, as well as um, uh, plantings throughout the site, some of which were within the 100 uh, foot buffer um, and the 35 foot buffer. So both of those buffers are, are marked on uh, the plan on the screen um, uh, and highlighted in blue uh, to kind of uh, uh, show them a, a bit um, uh, more brightly. And uh, there were a series of plantings that were proposed uh, to enhance uh, the wetlands with inside the 35 foot no build area as well as uh, invasive species control proposed in that area. Um, construction occurred uh, from 2017 to 2020. Uh, also in the fall of 2020, uh, invasive species control in this area, my mouse is highlighting over the, the northwest corner uh, in, in the northern edge of the site uh, where wetlands were delineated, uh, uh, that a uh, series of Oriental bittersweet uh, and garlic mustard uh, and multiflora rose were removed from this area, as well as uh, a series of uh, 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 native plantings were proposed that were proposed were were planted. Almost all of what was uh, proposed was planted. There were some uh, species at the time that were uh, that the owner had. Um, 
had had swapped for based on availability at the time, but the total numbers of, of species that were originally proposed uh, as, as wetland enhancement plantings uh, and what uh, was eventually planted, uh, as we noted in our application letter, were um, uh, of equivalent numbers. And so we're asking the uh, commission to take that into consideration uh, and, and to approve that. Um, as we uh, went to review the uh, as-built conditions, um, uh, Eaton survey uh, had put together the as-built drawing. And one of the things that we noticed um, was uh, uh, north of this Western building, there's an area where uh, there was a small retaining wall that was constructed uh, inside the uh, 35 foot no build zone. We brought that to the attention uh, of Shaw, uh, the owner, um, and uh, he had several other uh, boulders put in to further demarcate and kind of better demarcate the actual 35 foot uh, boundary here. Um, I'm going to switch to the next uh, slide uh, in the presentation, which is I took this photo uh, today on site um, and my mouse is highlighted kind of in the middle of the screen. You can see uh, a series of rocks uh, and arching a small wall. It's, it's roughly about a foot and a half to two feet tall. Uh, this was the stone wall that was built inside of the, the 35 foot line and the, the broader arc is uh, boulders that are demarcating um, the uh, actual 35 foot no build zone. So uh, one thing this photo indicates is that uh, vegetation is not being maintained inside of the, the new um, kind of further you know, uh, delineated uh, 35 foot line. And so what we are we are asking um, the commission to uh, uh, allow the, the, ex the wall that was built within uh, to remain. It is um, uh, our opinion that uh, we think this would actually create more disturbance and uh, possibility of uh, uh, sediment release into uh, the neighboring wetlands. Uh, by removing this wall. And so we'd like to ask that uh, uh, we understand that, that no mowing should occur uh, and no um, nobody should be inside this area. Uh, nothing should happen in here aside from uh, what was originally uh, discussed in the, the original order of conditions of beyond passive recreation. No, no mowing or species removal should occur in this area. Uh, but we are asking that 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 initial wall stay and that then that uh, outer wall be uh, respected to that uh, to this boundary. Um, I'm going to switch back to the to the as built drawing here. Um, the other uh, item that we noticed was uh, along uh, the western side of the property there was uh, a hedgerow of arborvitae that was originally proposed, and it was proposed on uh, like three foot center plantings and what was discovered that was a little bit tight spacing uh, for the species, even, even for a smaller cultivar. So these are planted on slightly wider uh, spacings of, of four foot center spacings, but it changed the numbers of, of total number of species proposed. So uh, we asked, uh, we asked the, uh, the owner, Shaw, to plant some additional species uh, in this area of, of native species in order to uh, kind of account for that uh, quantity difference within the 100 foot buffer. Um, and uh, there were some plantings that were originally proposed uh, on the northern end of this uh, uh, central island, uh, which were not, uh, uh, which were which were planted ultimately over uh, further to the northwest uh, in order to accommodate, uh, you know, potential future um, plans, which are are part of the uh, forthcoming NOI that I'll discuss shortly. So. Uh, we wanted to ask the commission if uh, you know that to take that into consideration and hopefully find that that was acceptable. Um, uh, uh, they are still plants that were proposed to be within the uh, 100 foot buffer, and uh, so they are they are still in the 100 foot buffer, just in a slightly different location. Um, so that is uh, the certificate of compliance. Um, I'll stop now and see if anybody has any specific questions about that before. Also talking about the notice of intent, if that's okay. So all those buildings are constructed except for the 
the garages, I assume, were constructed, but you're going to turn those into apartments. That's correct. Uh, the garage, I'll, I'll highlight that with my uh, mouse here. It's the, the building uh, central and north on the plan. Uh, that's currently a one-story building. The far western side of it is an area that's a designated recycling area. And then there are eight bays in, in this building, and it's all a one-story building. And this is the location for um, uh, the uh, this is the layout for uh, the uh, notice of intent for, for the addition. The idea is to take this eight bay garage uh, and with it with the ninth bay, that's the recycling area, to move the recycling area, create a recycling uh, shed that will house that. So it's still publicly available for all the residents, um, but move that outside the building and then change this. Uh, instead of having eight garages, it would have four and then it would have uh, uh, raised a second story um, to offer uh, four additional units. And then uh, uh, in exchange for the, the reduced uh, garage parking area, the proposal is to have five additional spaces that would cut into this central island and the existing uh, patio space that's here is simply being proposed to get moved south. Uh, so it's still it's still there for the residents. It's just it would get shifted, uh, and then uh, the plantings that were originally proposed to go uh, outside of the 100 foot buffer in this island are are still being uh, proposed, and they would go on the uh, outer perimeter of of the parking lot uh, for a series of tre native trees and shrubs uh, and surrounding the uh, relocated patio area in this central area. So Sarah, do we have to make a decision about the certificate of compliance separately? Um, is that what we need to do now? Uh, so you, you can wait and vote on them both at the end of the NOI hearing. But if you're ready to vote on this now, you certainly could do that. I, I just had a question about the wall that was constructed in the no build area. Can you describe the construction of that structure? Yeah, I'm going to see. Uh, Shawl, are you uh, on this call still? Is it a dry wall or is it? Um... Uh, it's a dry. It's a dry laid stone wall. That's correct. Yeah, it's just local stones, like too high, local rocks. So there's no footing or excavation or anything of that. It's just rocks laid no. on. It was primarily laid by hand. Okay, thank you. Does that help answer your question on the construction of the wall? Yes, thank you. Very okay, much. sure, of course. I had a couple of comments. Um, it sounds like you're going to be adding about 200 square feet of native vegetation to protect the, uh, the setback. Um, and it sounds like you need to add some uh, stormwater runoff detention chambers as well. Is that a correct reading? That's, that's correct. Uh, and I'll, I'm gonna switch. Am I still sharing my screen right now with you guys? Yes. yes. Okay, great. Um, so uh, this, uh, sorry, uh, this slide here is uh, the uh, drainage utility slide. We're adding, uh, we're proposing to add um, an additional underground infiltration chamber, uh, which my mouse is highlighting uh, here, centrally located, uh, just south of the uh, uh, proposed second story buildings um, and, in, and in front of the proposed uh, parking spaces. And that would connect to the existing underground infiltration chamber in order to accommodate the additional impervious area from those parking spaces and from the recycling shed and the slightly larger uh, uh, roof footprint uh, there. Uh, the second story is proposed to have slightly cantilevered sections uh, uh, over, uh, uh, over the north side of the building uh, as, as outlined here. Uh, so that, uh, that stormwater plan had been submitted to DPW. It had been, uh, 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 and had been reviewed and approved by them already. Um, 
And we had found previously, uh, uh, you know, pr prior to this uh, proposed additional uh, stormwater infiltration that the previous, um, uh, what was proposed and installed uh, stormwater management features uh, for the existing uh, Sunwood Green development was uh, functionally and properly. In terms of part of the certificate of compliance aspect of this discussion tonight. Mm -hmm. What are you proposing for erosion okay. control? Uh, we're proposing, uh, my apologies that the note is a bit blurry here uh, and that the highlight is here. We're proposing to have erosion control all the way around uh, the down gradient uh, from the activities. So uh, that would, uh, my cursor is outlining where the erosion control would go uh, for the proposed activities. And what would the erosion controls consist of? Uh, it would consist of, uh, likely would consist of wattles unless you thought it needed additional measures. Yeah, I have another photo here that I'll show, um, which is the area behind, uh, this is the north side of the, of the garage building here. Mm -hmm. So, um, one piece that is proposed uh, is this is looking from the uh, north uh, west corner is what is proposed. There are a series of uh, single uh, first floor egresses of, on the north side of the building and they're proposed to come out to a cantilevered walkway. So the idea is uh, trying to not have any construction, uh, any activities, uh, any, any new part of the building uh, be into uh, at, a, at a ground level into the 35 foot no build zone. So uh, this uh, cantilevered walkway would uh, allow for the uh, there to be first floor egresses, which is, um, I'm not an architect, so this is outside my wheelhouse, but it's my understanding that that's required by code that they couldn't use the garage doors on the building for it. Um, uh, Shaw, please jump in and, and correct me if I interpreted that uh, wrong. Um, and uh, then uh, you can also see from this rendering that there is a series of cantilevered uh, balconies and, and slightly on the, on the corner here, a slightly cantilevered uh, uh, second story uh, footprint so as to offer the residents a slightly larger uh, square footage uh, inside. Mm -hmm. The idea uh, for this is the uh, construction of this is that um, only uh, uh, a limited amount of uh, uh, kind of construction activity would take place back in this area. These boulders are delineating the 35 foot no build zone. So there's enough space for an individual to walk back here and to build out uh, first that, that cantilevered walkway. And then um, the remaining construction would occur off of that walkway. And then from the, um, uh, then from the south side of the building to bring materials in. So there wouldn't be any, um, any construction materials or any heavy equipment brought back into this area. Um, but uh, uh, given that it is construction of, of uh, this, you know, of a second story on this building, if, if anything, uh, back in this area, what is ultimately proposed is that um, for any disturbance to take place and the uh, uh, current area that is currently mowed uh, back here for all this to be planted with a restoration mix in order to, to, in the future, not have this area mowed at all, but uh, be more similar to the herbaceous vegetation that you see just to the north of, of the boulders that are here. So this is that uh, view again. So all, all uh, staging materials will be brought in from the south side of these buildings and then uh, brought through and then brought up in order to for the construction to occur. Now that 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 zone between the back of the building and the no build zone is, like you said, it's very slim and it's just enough for someone to walk back there and do some work. Are you planning to have any full time observation or put in large barriers or something to ensure that workers don't expand that area? Um, we hadn't proposed it at this at this time. We were uh, anticipating that the, the boulders that are on the ground would be sufficient to demarcate that that zone. But we're also, certainly... you, 
And the erosion control barrier also will help demarcate that zone too. Mm -hmm. I guess, I guess considering that there was already a wall built in the no build zone, I'd be concerned that moving forward, you know, that kind of thing potential to happen again there unless there's someone carefully monitoring the situation. Okay. Any other questions from commissioners? No. Sarah, um, do you have questions? Yeah, my biggest questions were about construction methodology and how this area behind the buildings would be prevented from being encroached on by use over time. Yeah, that, that was my concern I was getting at, Sarah. Um, and uh, let's see, um, pardon my... break here at multiple screens and having a hard time finding the original documents that I had before. Um, that uh, the, uh, uh, yeah, generally that it's our understanding uh, from what uh, Shaw has described to us that uh, there's not a plan of bringing staging any materials back here, any heavy equipment uh, to be able to lift up any of the uh, Roofing trusses or any of any of the that heavy material is all going to be coming in from the south side into that area. But you know, we'd certainly be uh, if, if there are uh, proposed ideas uh, like temporary construction fencing uh, along that back edge. Um, but even that, bringing that into the back edge, we hadn't been wanting to propose something like that because uh, if that was to fall over, cause damage to vegetation, or simply the installation and removal of that large, like, you know, kind of six foot tall or four foot tall construction fencing could be a, just could be a, a, a problem to create more damage than, than not. But um, that, that was our initial thinking. Um, And um, did you have the, you said the stormwater uh, was, re, was uh, reviewed and uh, approved by uh, the DPW? That's correct. I wanted to add, it's Carlos Nieto from the Berkshire Design Group. Also, this uh, was in front of the uh, planning board for a special permit approval, and it also was approved for a special permit. Oh, thanks, Carlos. This is the last hurdle. Um, I, I, I see no problems with it. That's me. Any, any other questions from commissioners on this? Any questions from any audience that's watching these proceedings? Um, Sarah, we should take care of the certificate of compliance first. I, if you're, if you have enough information to make a decision on the notice of intent, you could close that hearing as well. And do them both at the same time. You can handle it all in one. Well, two separate votes, but close the hearing okay. and then vote. But don't close the hearing if if you feel like you still need additional pieces of information from the applicant or the consultant. Um, actually, I feel that they've taken the necessary steps to put the project through with um, no damage to the uh, dash or wetlands. Actually, I understand it's uh, an intermittent stream and a uh, deep channel. To the north of the property, do you mean? Yeah. Uh, yes, that's that's still there. And from our observations, there hasn't been any uh, real sediment load transfer from this site uh, to that. That the our infiltration, uh, uh, the underground infiltration chambers have been uh, working appropriately. 
uh, and the vegetation that's put in, uh, if I'm still sharing my screen, the vegetation that's, that's put in are around this area in the northeast corner of the site has been working effectively in order to be able to capture any small uh, bit of fine sediment that, would, that was coming out. The, the pipes of the infiltration chambers uh, exit to the north. Uh, there's a retaining wall that's here and it exits out into a, um, a stone uh, bay. This darker line is a, is, a, is a weir that's here, but there's, there's really not a lot of sediment really that even ends up in this initial uh, riprap area that's here. So it's been doing an effective job of, of capturing that and slowing water down through the site. You're not going to be doing any excavation anyways. Um, basically, you're tearing down the garage and putting apartments. Well, not, well, no, you're not even tearing that down. You're just building apartments up over, over the existing garage area. Yeah. Can I touch on that for a second? Please. Sure. Yeah, so what we discovered is that there was not much demand for the garages, but there was a great demand for small housing units. So we decided to make that alteration. So in effort to minimize any impact, we're literally going to take the roof off. And this was designed to take the roof off and put it back on. And we're yeah. maintaining the first floor as is, adding a second floor and reinstalling the roof with slight addition that there was a, a lean-to in the back to maximize um, the little bit of uh, space that we have for bedrooms in the back. But the existing structure is going to be maintained, slightly changed for window and door openings, but it's all going to be maintained as is when we use the roof. Oh. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Thanks for clarifying, Shaw. There's no other questions from commissioners. Um, would someone like to close the hearing? I'll make a motion to close the Second. Those in favor? Zero. Uh, all right, Alex. Yes. Mason. Yes. Jen. Yes. Paul. Yes. And Jason. Yes. All right, unanimous. Hearings closed. Okay. Um, you want to tackle the uh, certificate of compliance? Get that out of the way. The. Uh, I mean, the work was completed. The only hitch was the uh, retaining wall, the, the dry retaining wall. So it's more or less porous. And it appears to be well vegetated on both sides. Uh, uh, it's up to commissioners whether they want to leave it in place. Um, I have no problems with because it's stabilized. Yeah, I guess Mason, my thought is I think it makes sense to have it removed. It's my opinion. Okay. Anyone else? Your, re your reason being because it, it is an encroachment into the 35 foot zone, which, which was it generous. Is. It is, and there's, um, you know, I, I don't want moving forward any, anyone in the area to think that that's anything other than the no build zone when there's clearly something built in it. Anyone else think that way? Hmm. I mean, if it's played by hand, it should be easy enough to take down. Um, there's, it's not, there's no mortar holding the stones together. Right. Yeah, I, I don't disagree with that either of taking it down. 
I see value. I think in an ideal world, if it required no work, I would prefer it not to be there. Okay, so you're in favor of removing it? Yeah. Okay. I just think nope. it makes that border a lot clearer. Yeah, I was kind of on the fence, but I, I, if it's the, the, you know, what it sounds like commissioners are, are going for, I'm okay with removing that. I think the point, I, either. I think the point is, um, you know, we, we um, made concessions to have the 35 foot non encroachment zone. Um, in this particular zoning area. So we, we already made a made a concession to the normal 50 feet that we had every, everywhere. Um, it's, it's entirely up to you guys if you feel comfortable having it um, removed. It uh, should be done by you. Um, you know, they're not going to go in there with a bulldozer and remove the wall. I assume they're going to take it out by hand the way it was built. And the only area you have to really worry about is under the last row of stones. Um, and it's a small, pretty small footprint to uh, revegetate. Right. So um, with that in mind, um, Jason, why don't you make a motion? Wow. So just procedurally, um, if the commission does want to require that this wall be removed, the cleanest way to do that would be to or, uh, include that as a condition in the order for the new work um, and then just hold off on, on issuing the certificate and the certificate could then be issued when that, that condition is satisfied. Okay, so get the certificate of compliance for now. Um, so you you could move to make a motion to um, basically do, to do that re with regard to the certificate and, and hold off until that that is completed if the commission does want to ensure that the wall is removed. Okay, go ahead. I want to give me a motion. Are folks in agreement? I don't want to overstep or anything. If there others have a different opinion, well. Jason, I'd, they are. I'd be curious to better understand what is the advantage of removing it. Uh, in, in my opinion, you know, this this zone was established, and this build uh, this wall went in anyway, so uh, there was a level of, of oversight there. Um, so if they have the opportunity to remove it, I think it just makes sense. And, yeah. and, and as Jen indicated, it's. It's a cleaner demarcation if it's gone long term, in my opinion. Uh, yeah. Okay. I get it's, it. it's not setting precedent either. Um, hmm. May okay. I yeah. um, may I offer a, a, a comment or an argument to retain the wall? You can offer one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, uh, not, uh, and I don't mean to uh, uh, be argumentative per se. Uh, uh, I, I appreciate all of your discussion. Uh, the there is a small amount of earth behind that uh, you know existing set of stones, and moving the uh, I, I suppose the argument would be that in removing some of those stones, then uh, grading would need to occur to slope that area back, which would disturb the existing uh native natural vegetation that is establishing in that area and there'd be certainly an opportunity if if at that time all of a sudden we got a deluge of big rainstorms that we couldn't really control uh there there could be really a dumping of of sediment that we wouldn't want uh that would kind of just push into the local wetlands right there so the i understand the the concern that something had occurred uh, inside the no build zone and, and shouldn't be there. So it should be removed on that principle. And I certainly have no argument to that, but just in terms of the potential sediment release that could come from the deconstruction process of that, just wanted to put that out there that if it was 
sufficiently covered over with vegetation might be harder to see in the future. Um, uh, and so that would be the argument, I guess, that I'd like to just make that statement for it to for it to remain. Mm. Which which might be handled with a uh, erosion control fabric um, mm. to hold the slope, you know, when you when you move the wall. Certainly. So you can even, you can even plant through that stuff. So it's one of plantings in on 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 the fabric. Sure. Yeah, I've seen that done too. It could be filled up with liriope, which is a great ground cover. I may I may recommend uh, uh, something more native than liriope. Okay. That area. But but yes, uh, the, that's uh, that same idea of a herbaceous yeah. uh, perennial that in that case. Now, Jason, did you have a question? I was just going to say it, it sounded like the wall was built and then you indicated then there was some subsequent grading within the no-build zone behind the wall, right? Oh no, what I'm indicating is uh, that if those stones were removed, there'd be kind of vertical earth behind it. Um, those stones are stacked on top of each other uh, approximately a foot and a half, uh, maybe two feet uh, in height. I haven't put a tape measure next to it, but uh, so that uh, that vertical earth that would be behind it when the stones come out, I wouldn't want to see that just slough off into the existing vegetation. So that would need to get regraded away from towards the, the new demarcated boundary. But that's a fair amount of, of grading and earthwork to scrape out. Um, so that was the that was the argument of, of removing it. It's it's not impossible to do by any stretch. And if you guys deem that it's uh, that that's what you want to do, then that's fair. Um, but I just wanted to make that that case. Thank you. Sure, of course. Yeah, thank you. Oops. Up to you guys. What do you want to do? <laughs> it does seem an effective erosion control measure if it's left in place. Can I, can I offer some um, vegetative landscaping, more uh, robust landscaping along the existing rocks so would create a more visual barrier? Water between the 35 foot and beyond. And if you look back at the picture, maybe you would have a better uh, that I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, right now, there's just, uh, I believe, small plantings in front of it or right at the 45, 35 foot buffer. And also, I just wanted to take a, a second to apologize for that. There was, of course, no intent on our part to, to be in this condition right now. And uh, the wall was uh, simply a mistake of miscommunication between the surveyor the landscaper and myself, and I take full responsibility for it. And, uh, Doug, again, could, you, I apologize. could you share that picture again? Absolutely, <laughs> we'd be happy to. Uh, would you mind giving me a, a screen sharing? Oh, I took it away, sorry. Um, oh, that's all right, that's all right. I shouldn't have turned it off. No, that's okay. Okay, go ahead. Let's see, I think that should do it. Uh, and... This is the photo of the site currently. Oh, nope. Yeah. We're not seeing it yet. Oh, you're not. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Just me there looking we go. without the share yeah. button. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. It's late in the day. You are all able to see that now. I'm I'm hoping. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good, good. Good. 
about how foot. many feet is that like from sort of that internal triangle from there to the far yeah uh i'm gonna argue that's uh 25 30 feet okay well, no no i think well also the you mean the distance between the two walls or no the no the length of the stone the wall, the wall. Okay. yeah 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 i got it that sound that sounds about right maybe uh 30 probably 30 feet at the longest um mm -hmm. Uh, and the distance between them is uh, roughly four feet. Hmm. The widest, yeah. Yeah. So it certainly would be, uh, if I may pose uh, two different uh, arguments here. One being, uh, if it is retained following uh, Shaw's suggestion that additional shrubs be planted right along the inset of this stone wall, like say a red osier dogwood that, that grows in densely, uh, that sort of spreads, uh, that's, that was also part of the original uh, wetland enhancement plantings that'll help to really demarcate this and, and act as a barrier um, and uh, to try to make sure people are not thinking that they can go in and that will help further sort of block the existence of uh, the visibility of this, at least when there's vegetation on it in the growing season. Of course, the second option would be uh, if you uh, feel it's necessary that this uh, be stone be removed and then uh, it be regraded to cut up further towards this. And then this now embankment would be then replanted with uh, a series of uh, herbaceous perennials uh, that would uh, that would help to stabilize that slope and, and cover that area back in. So in both alternatives, I guess I'm suggesting it'd be native shrubs versus native uh, perennials. Um, uh, and so those two options. Just wanted to if, if that's if if that's helpful. I'll, I'll just say for me, it's really helpful to look at it again. And I looking at it again would be amenable to just planting shrubs down that middle. I think that would, I mean, my main concern is just a clear demarcation and not having that weird gap feel like a usable area. Um, I don't even think that they have to be planted up against the boundary i think they could go straight down the middle as long as they had some width to them and just took up th that space um for me i feel like looking at it now that would satisfy my concern i would agree with that jen i like the idea of shrubs right down the middle further demarcated yeah I, that sounds good would kind of hide, hide, hide the stone wall, and, and yes, um, basically people would say, "Okay, here's, here's the line right here." Um, yep, exactly. I can agree with that. I think that's a, a fair compromise. Okay, so Sarah. Do we put a condition in the certificate of compliance or do we add this to uh, the order conditions for the project? So you can't condition a certificate of compliance. Um, there is a partial certificate, but that doesn't really seem to make sense here. Um, I thought there was uh, ongoing conditions or something. There is an ongoing condition, but you can't add anything new. So if it, oh. you know anything that the, uh, the no disturb area will live forever is an ongoing condition. Uh, but okay, but the so issue a partial a certificate of compliance, and then when we do the order conditions for the the new project, we'll put that in there. Yeah, it, either that or just um, be, the commission could consider it an acceptable change, and then carry this on as a new condition in the the new order. So a couple different ways to deal with it. I don't think there's a particular drawback to any of them. Okay. I need a, a, a vote for a partial certificate of compliance. What do you jump? <laughs> so so moved. Well second. All in favor? Alan? 
Yes. Mason? Yes. Jen? Yes. Paul? Yes. And Jason? Yes. All right, unanimous, thank you. Um, thank you all uh, for the discussion tonight. Uh, can I ask one administrative question for a partial uh, certificate of compliance? Uh, what is uh, needed on our end once uh, shrubs go in, should we return to another hearing uh, in order to get a full completion of uh, certificate? Of I compliance? think that can be handled when you go for a certificate of compliance with the notice of intent. Okay. That's yeah. So, follow. so Doug, the the order of conditions for the work hasn't been issued by the commission yet. So stick around for just a couple of minutes more. Sure. Um, but. You know, this will be a partial for now that will satisfy DEP that we'll be able to issue an, an order. And then when you come in for a, a, a certificate of compliance request for the new work, assuming that it will be permitted, then you can do a full request for certificate at that time for this work as well. Okay, understood, thank you. Hey, question on uh, order conditions for the project. I'll, uh, I'll let Sarah explain her comments. Uh, I, all my comments are moot, essentially, at this point. Um, it seems like all of the DEP comments and my staff questions have been resolved. Yeah. So, it, you know, if the, the commission should add standard conditions, if you're going to issue an order, and any, I would say anything else that, that's necessary to protect the resource area, especially during construction. Yeah, one. One being the shrub plantings. Yeah. In that, yeah. In that area. Too. Yeah, and I'd like to propose um, consideration of, of some erosion controls in the back of the building at the 35 foot no build zone demarcation, and perhaps some kind of a um, of a more formal demarcation, a temporary one during construction, and be sure that workers don't trample in that area. Something as simple as like like a snow fence or something. I don't know how others feel about it, but it doesn't have to be um, a grand barrier or anything. I was thinking the same thing, Jason. Got that, Sarah? Yep. Um, and then a uh, condition for the planting of dogwood shrubs by the uh, stone retaining wall, between the stone retaining wall and the, uh, the demarcated 35 foot setback line. Plus the standard conditions. I'd like someone like to move those conditions, please. Moved. I'll second it. All in favor? Alex? Yes. Mason? Yes. Jen? Yes. Paul? Yes. And Jason? Yes. Okay. Unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Have, have a good night. Bye bye. Thanks. Okay, next we have a notice of intent for construction of an accessory residential structure and related improvements within the riverfront. And this is on 372 North Farms Road. Is there someone here representing that? I, yes, excuse me, uh, Joe Rogers from GCA uh, here representing the, the applicants and owners, which are uh, Laura Minsky and Bram Wilson. Okay, hey, could you give us a brief description of what's going on? Sure, yeah, so the, there's an um, existing home that's been on the property for quite some time. Um, there's a circle driveway in the front. Uh, they're interested in building and ancillary building on the property. Uh, the majority of the property is in riverfront area. Um, so they've been looking at a couple different ideas about how to, to build a structure for um, 
their family to have accessible space as well as for some you know workshop space and so the project would involve work in the outer 100 to 200 foot portion of the riverfront um it part of designing the project um would you like me to show the 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 overall site plan to guide it Please. i i don't have one at all okay that'd probably be the easiest Let me get to that page So sharing screen two. All right. So uh, let me get to a. Excuse me. While I get to the site map. Okay, so this is just to give you an idea of where the property is on North Farm Road. Um, this is the mean annual high water line on the back of the property. Um, just kind of giving you an idea, highlighting the existing structure in the driveway, one, the 100 and 200. Uh, that line was um, picked up by a surveying team and added to the site plan, which I colorized. Um, so on here, this is the proposed uh, structure. Um, so the concept that we came up with was one to try and uh, both improve the conditions of the site um, and maintain the aesthetics of the site and fit within um, the regulations for the amount of, of, of uh, area built on the lot itself. So the goal, the idea here would be to remove um, about 3,200 square feet of um, this asphalt, asphalt driveway from the outer uh, 100 to 200 foot portion of the riverfront area. Um, this would just get removed from, this, from the site and converted back into lawn. Um, the trade-off being uh, by removing the 3,200 square feet, we get we drop the um, developed area on the property uh, down to about 5% uh, in previous area. So then um, the proposed building would be here with a permeable path and the parking would then move off to the Northern corner of the lot and be um, outside of the riverfront area. Um, also part of this, of the, the work on the site, uh, they are, investigating the need for uh, improving their um, uh, their septic system. Um, so that the thought is that they would need to upgrade their septic um, and that would be tied into uh, the work that's going on um, to remove the asphalt and utilize um, this area during the same time frame. Um, and right now the thought is that this will end up being the likely spot, um, but they're uh, still coordinating with, with the SEPT designer. Um, so, you know, with the goal of obviously keeping it out um, outside of the inner 100 and finding the, an area on the lot that is, um, you know, furthest from, from the resource, from the, uh, the river itself as possible uh, in order to, to site that location. Um, the other element of, the, of this project, uh, so there'd be, you know, of course, Installing erosion control on the downslope sides of any soil disturbances. And then uh, we were proposing just quite a bit of, of lawn on this property and open space. Um, I can go back to the aerial in a second if you'd like. And so the applicants interested in uh, generally, you know, revegetating it's part of the riverfront area. So they've offered an enhancement um, area to start. Um, down in this, this corner of the lot uh, with um, some selected native species to, to kind of get their, their, um, their property a little bit more vegetated down by the river. Um, and I can toggle back to, here's this, the property again. You can kind of see how the majority of it is, is maintained currently as lawn space.
Um, and I can answer any of the, the questions that came up through DP or um, from Sarah's questions or uh, the commission's questions about the project. What's the existing uh, sanitary system now? Um, I don't know that actually, uh, what this, what the, the dimensions of that are. Um, maybe if Laura uh, uh, could join, could unmute. Yeah, information? I, I don't know the square footage. I know the general location based on like the title five drawing we got when we bought the property. So the tank is um, sort of in the L that's this stone wall sort of central in the property behind the house. Okay. And then it leaches um, south and west. So Joe, if you move your mouse to the left, mm -hmm. um, it's much, the leach field is much close. Yeah, about there. Oh, it's hard for me to direct, but. Um, sure. Now is the proposed building gonna have a, a bathroom too, uh, to tie into the, the sanitary? Yes, it would be one septic for the two structures. So you would have to enlarge the septic system for that anyways. What, can you say that again? I'm sorry. Okay. Mason, were you asking if the system would have to be enlarged to meet Title V? It, it would have to be enlarged, right? So right now we have two systems. We have a gray water system and a regular system. And those would both come out of play and be replaced with a four bedroom system. I think we have a three bedroom system on the main system. This is all just my understanding from okay. the Title V report. But you need a larger tank when you go from three bedrooms to four bedrooms? I think Possibly. we need a larger leach field. Oh, uh, okay. Sarah, you wanna go over the comments? Uh, sure. So, and Joe, you can go over your um, your answers to DEP's comments, but but my biggest question was why the proposed building couldn't be shifted, you know, just towards North Farms Road. So keeping it the same north south, but just moving it, you know, towards this new three car parking lot farther away from the resource area. Sure. Yeah. Uh, so I think um, so, so. I guess I'll go through how we ended up here. Um, so originally the, the main interest for the initial interest for the applicant was to put it um, right behind this stone wall where there's a drop off. You can see the, the gradient here. There is unknown time there, you, there was a barn back here. And so there's a, there's a nice uh, kind of, you know, love the, from the level parking area it comes out to the wall and then drops off. And so their thought was originally to put it here so you could have uh, a kind of a walk-in accessibility. And then, um, so we explored that, but realized that it posed a problem because of being in the inner 100 of the riverfront. Um, and it started to get a little bit too complicated. Plus um, it would be difficult to, uh, to meet the you know, impervious areas and disturbance on the property because we wouldn't be able to remove as much asphalt or it would become trickier. Um, so that was kind of thrown out as the first first idea that we talked about possibly in the um, southern part of the property, uh, but the grading here would have been substantial. And again, we still we had the problem of there being um, needing to have access. Um, there's also some of the best trees are in this area, um, the larger diameter, 30 foot, 30 inch or 34 inches. And so the idea was kind of scrapped that this would be too much work, too much potential damage to the, to the trees and, and not enough reduction in overall impervious surfaces. 
Um, so then the other part that we talked about um, was, all right, well, this, there's this area on the north side of the house. Um, and then the question in hand is, why is it so far out? And so the currently um, there is a, a the abutter is pretty close to the, the line, the property line in this location. Um, and so right now there's a lot of, uh, of drainage and roof runoff from the structure that heads naturally down slope. And in the winter, it builds up and freezes and becomes kind of an icy mess here. And so there's concern um, about the stability of the foundation of the existing home because of already have, it's an older foundation and already having a lot of water running down slope that by moving this structure forward, into this area that we would be then shedding off more, uh, more uh, water from the roof and, and impacting this and potentially jeopardizing the foundation. Either that or having to do a substantial amount of, um, of curtain draining and rerouting uh, groundwater uh, so to prevent it from, from being a problem and then most likely sh having that daylight water uh, from uh, from this from this area somewhere else on the property, um, per, which would potentially cause either issues towards the road or towards the inner riverfront area. So this, um, you know, while it's not not uh, a reason for Wetlands Protection Act purposes, um, having these three structures all close to the road was a concern just from aesthetics and from character of the of the area and so wanting to have um, have the staggered buildings was was more aesthetically pleasing although not regulatory um, in that sense Can I just share that the neighbor's house to the north of us has an addition that's not represented on this map. So yeah. the runoff is more significant because they have an L on our property line that comes back about the length of our house. So there's more water coming into that side yard than would be represented by this small square. It's like twice <laughs> as long. Yeah, well, it needs to be a major concern with DEP too. That um, the states want to act try to not put a structure closer to the river than um, existing structures. It's it's less the part about existing, but the performance standard is to put it. At, as far from the river as, as possible. And so in, in this design, based on that, that, assum that assumption about the impacts to the groundwater and runoff, this is uh, our proposal of what, where we believe that, it, you know, that it meets that criteria. And that's the, the question that, that needed to be um, explained in, based in the, the DEP's comment. Is why why isn't it forward any further forward? It's it's to stagger the building so that, that there isn't additional impacts to the foundation of the existing structure. I don't know if there's that I don't think there's anything to do with wetlands, but what the heck is night sky compliant yeah. something in your plan? Light? Yeah. Is it on the northern border, you've got night sky compliant LT. Oh, so it must be the lighting system that, um, so that it had uh, the night sky is, you know, so you can see the stars at night. And so they have often have um, covers over the lights so that yeah. they shine down and not up. Oh, okay. Just curious. Oh, that's, yeah, that's funny. Every light in Sedona, Arizona has that. <laughs> oh, yeah? Yes. Oh. 
What do you think, commissioners? It sounds to me like the plan has reduced the impact, if I read it correctly, from 9.2% to 5.6% of the area. And that that's well under the allowance. So it doesn't seem to be impinging on uh, inland wetlands and doesn't seem to uh, have any flood control problems. Um, I'm in agreement with it. Joe and Laura, when do you expect to have details about the septic system? It, it seems challenging to permit yeah. a project that was unquantified. Well, yeah. So the part part of um, part of this is there is some you know, as you know, people are uh, extremely busy. So there's a little bit of that in play, but also um, wanting to have the kind of the uh, you know. Uh, the kind of figure out the design aspects of the home to know how that might impact the location of the septic. So ideally, um, in a perfect world, we would ask to condition the project to provide a, uh, an, a septic design that could be approved by the commission before any construction were to take place as part of the order conditions. Um, that would be preference. Um, alternatively, um, continue, you know, continuing the meeting until that that information is available, um, but also getting input from the commission about any um, any additions to to the work area or or limitations before that point, so they could not have to design it multiple times. Um. In back of the proposed building, there's a, a rectangle that looks like a, a, a foundation of an old building. Is yeah. There... It's a blueberry uh, patch, I think. <laughs> okay. I was gonna say if it was an old building, it might say, okay, we are further from the river than the building is. Yeah. Uh, Mason, how do how do we handle this? The septic? Uh, yeah, the septic issue, given what Joe just explained. I understand how how our opinion about the building can impact the potential design of the septic, but how, how do we handle what's before us now relative to the NOI for the building? Right, okay, I'd like to see the septic design myself before I vote on this. Yeah. Yep. The only other alternative would be to permit the septic separately. Yeah, that was um, discussed and we're, you know, obviously. Yeah, but it's like on the there are, of the tent all over again. Right, yeah, and there are, you know, it, it, it and a lot will depend on, you know, if it's a, if the design is not larger, it, it might fit under the exemptions for replacement. Um, if it's larger, it would need to go through a notice of intent um, for sure, uh, just to clarify that it's meeting, you know, the best practices. Um, and you know, already years ago, they were requiring larger tanks for when it came time for uh, people on septic system to replace their their system. Yeah. Just, State uh, requirements went from like a 10,000 gallon tank to a 15,000. 15,000. Have you, have you done a case. That 15. might be the case here. No, I, sorry, I've been holding off on the septic until we have a sense of if it's feasible. Because my understanding is that the design would change based on where the building goes. And I just. I can't keep paying experts to do things based on unknowns. Yeah. But you can understand our position. You need to vote on a plan. And if the septic isn't shown on the plan, then. 
Yeah, and, and I guess it, it would make sense to potentially sep separate them out because even if the commission decides to issue an order of conditions for the work that's before it currently, you know, you could decide at some point not to put a bathroom in the building at the moment um, or, you know, do a repair or something like that that might cause a long delay. So it's not, it's not really separating out an integral component of the project. Right. You're saying, you're saying um, as a sec septic, septic system later? Yeah, I mean, other than continuing the hearing until that's complete, which it sounds like could be a, a long time. I know septic designers are, are backed up, some of them for a year or better. Um, I don't know how to cleanly address it other than two separate permits. Right. Do you think those guys would be the last ones that would be backed up? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, could we just informally, like, amongst ourselves, come to a conclusion that this might be feasible, what's proposed? When would that give the property owner sufficient comfort to move forward with a design and then come back with a complete submittal? I like that idea. I, the, the only issue is that we will definitely be losing at, at least one commission member between now and then. Um, so depending on how long it takes, it, it might necessitate a new hearing and then we'd be back in the same same place that we started in. I see. So um, I, I, I'm, from what I'm hearing, the idea of condi conditioning the septic as part of the approval process is, is not, uh, isn't I, is un, uncomfortable with that. Um, it, it's just, it's difficult without knowing the scope of the potential riverfront area disturbance, you know, since even since you don't have a perk, would, could it be a mounted system? Could it gotcha. be something yeah. that's, that's really potentially disturbing? I mean, we're not looking at the, the actual septic system itself, just the construction, but it, it, okay. it's really just a complete unknown. So then the choices it sounds like would be to um, withdraw the septic component from the current notice intent and, and try to um, uh, see if, if we can get to a place where the hearing could be close or to continue um, the hearing with discussion about this current design until um, that design could be submitted. Yeah, I think so. I mean, even if it were, you know, here's the worst case septic scenario for the amount of grading, and and that were something the commission approve, could approve. I mean, that wouldn't be a full design, but maybe that would be enough that we could put that together within the next few weeks or so. I mean, yeah, we don't need a full engineering design as much as we need a box that says this is the the limits of the work for the septic, right? Yeah, and this sure. is where the grading will will be, and and those sure. Things. Yeah. And I would guess a septic person could give you a worst case scenario and draw a box of a certain diameter or size or square footage and that that maybe that would work for, for our needs. And also uh, so, knowing where the excavation of the existing system would take place would be important as well. I mean, we don't uh, have to, like, we don't have to have the exact sub, septic design, but just, just a rectangle that says proposed septic Okay, would include, you know, any uh, fill or excavation or whatever um, that the designer thinks is necessary to put the system in. Um, because all the work is within the riverfront area. Right. This was just a buffer zone to a bordering vegetative well. Right, and so yeah, part of the the, you know, the the. The thing to me that was different in this case is the fact that the, you know, it's already disturbed because it's all lawn space and, and it's going to be, the system will be, you know, asphalt removed system put in, grass put back. Um, yeah. so that it's, it's, it's the veg the lack of like, it's not like a, the forest is, is being altered or anything in, in the right. so. Yeah, I, Joe, I think the commission would just need to know like, where would it go? Like they don't yeah, 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 yeah. even have that on a plan set at the moment. I understand. It would just be a potential free for all. And like you said, if um, you know, it if the system ends up not being enlarged and it's a simple repair, that could potentially be exempt anyway. Right, right. Okay. 
And as far as I know, the existing structures can stay, they just get backfilled um, and disconnected. So there, there shouldn't be a need for an excavation of the, the old system, unless there's a bylaw that I'm not aware of. Well, if you're replacing the old system, normally they just leave it in place and fill it full of sand. That was my understanding, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. um, Laura, do, how do you feel um, about the two paths um, to either separate them or continue and or continue um, with some more input about uh, the potential location for the for the design? I'm not sure of the implications. I like okay. the idea of getting approval for the location just so we can move the project forward. Yeah. Mm -hmm. we, we, yeah. Oh, we, you know, you can continue this to the next meeting and, and in that time you could at least get a hold of your septic designer and say, hey, give us an idea. You know, you don't have to give us the full design yet, but tell us, you know, where the system is going to go and all the commission needs. Based on this, yeah, based on this current plan, we could just put, mm -hmm. put the rectangle on the map saying this is where it will be and and whether it will be in ground or above ground. Um, so needing, you know, what kind of what kind of system would likely be needed there? Okay, I could do that. How often does the, this meeting happen? Oh, we'll meet again in two weeks. Yeah. Okay. And does the commission want any additional documentation about why the alternative moving the proposed building closer towards the parking lot was not considered? Or, or do you feel that um, the information that Joe provided today is, is enough? It's enough for me. I'm gonna say the more the better, but um, you know, it's- I should say to I do- we can, we can condition this thing and then DEP can appeal it themselves which I don't want to happen because they're not very friendly down there. <laughs> I mean, I, I think, I think myself, I feel like I have enough information. My, the one thing I, I did get caught on as Joe mentioned, there's some structural concerns with the dwelling, which drove the placement of the proposed building. And, you know, working at an engineering firm, I think, okay, well, did a structural engineer render an opinion? Not that I'm asking for that, but that's sort of my train of thought, which mm -hmm. if you're gonna propose structural, that's, I mean, that's the way you justify that. Yeah, like I said, the more information you can um, get us to, Tell us why it's in that place. Um, it's just overland drainage. I, I don't know if that's going to be enough of a concern. Uh, uh, if you're worried about extra drainage from the proposed building, it's taking care of the roof drains. But if the soils are so lousy you can't put roof drains in, that's something we have to know. So we, we want, we also, you know, because the, the applicant was, inter was interested and willing to, to remove so much of the paved area. Um, so we didn't proceed under a redevelopment, um, but that would be, would have been the other path, um, which it would qualify under um, with some slight, slight tweaks. Um, and that redevelopment would mean the building could almost be proposed in that pretty much that same location with a about a so that may be the route we have to go. It's it's just act, actually adding to the nose of intent. I don't think our whole new. Um, and it is case. within the commission's discretion to require that additional alternatives analysis. I mean, you never know where an appeal could come from, but it sounds like the the commission is is satisfied with the verbal information you provided. If you could just document that. Um, separately, I think that would be helpful. Sure. So do you think you can get this for us in two weeks or do you want for a time? 
Well, I can try. I don't know. Would a perk test have to be done in order for a septic person to draw the box? Or it it really depends. It's hard to say. Yes, perk test is already done because I see it. Uh, TBM number one. Um, did you already do perks out there? No. I mean, I can call the guy tomorrow. I don't know if I can turn it around in two weeks. Uh, so the, the next meeting after June 9th would be the 23rd. I mean, Sarah, we could get on the, I mean, or they could choose to get on the agenda for the next meeting and then change that next week, right? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. You can, yeah, you can always um, postpone it till the next meeting after that if you can't make that demo. Okay. I think it'd, it'd be worth, yeah, it'd be worth a try just to see if we can get additional information. That's two weeks, yeah. Yeah, the septic, the septic uh, location if you can and, and um, more um, reasons to have the post building where it is. Okay. All right, so uh, let's, let's try six o'clock just in case you do wanna go for another continuance, we can schedule around it. Uh, so does somebody want to make a motion for July, not July, June, uh, June 9th <laughs> at six o'clock? Uh, so moved. You a second. I'll second it. All those in favor, Sarah? Yeah. Uh, Alec? Yes. Mason? Yes. Jen? Yes. Randy? Randy's not here. Paul? Yes. And Jason? Yes. All right. Unanimous. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you very much. And we'll, uh, we'll send some information as soon as we can. Great. Thank, thank you. you. Thank right. you. Have a good night. Bye. All right, so the, the last item I have is the certificate of compliance for the project that Wayne was here to talk to you about. So this is an easy one. I didn't even send the information along, but this was a permit that was never acted on. It's long <laughs> since expired. Um, so the, the commission can go ahead and issue an, uh, Paul's call an invalid certificate of compliance, which indicates that the work was never done. Motion. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Okay. Just yell it out, Sarah. So, yeah. All right. Uh, Alec? Yes. Mason? Yes. Jen? Yes. Paul? Yes. And Jason? Yes. All right. Unanimous. And we have a lone figure up in the corner there, um, Rick Hudson. Yeah, I'm in a, I've been in a butter to the cutlery site since 1984. And so I obviously have a lot at stake with the result because it could greatly affect the value of my property. Um, I've not been able to figure out what the Conservation Commission's approach is to requesting and acquiring information or how the review is going on. Uh, so what I'd like to do is um, request a meeting with, with, with one of you. Uh, Mason, you were around when this all started a while ago um, and to, to discuss um, sort of my concerns, but more what the position of the commission is about this project and how you guys will go about making the decision to see if I could assist you in information. I mean, I've obviously read all of it and um, I've been around federal FERC EISs. So um, I have a sense of what an alternative analysis is, or at least in, in, in the federal system, what it is. So, um, and I'm not seeing that going on here. 
So, Rick, Rick, the commission can't speak with you offline about a, a pending application that would violate both due process um, and the open meeting law, but I am happy to chat with you about what's going on in, in the review of this. But the, um, just to summarize, an application was submitted. Uh, the commission is getting a, a third party peer review of the alternatives presented to see if there's anything that would be less damaging to resource areas. So a hearing has not been scheduled yet. All right, because of the complexity of the site, um, we thought that uh, third party review was necessary. Um, a lot of us don't have the expertise except we have Jason. Um, yeah, I was, I was confused about that. It looked like OHI was going to do that third party analysis. Was so that OHI submitted the application. And they're not doing the analysis. They they can't and they can't do a third party analysis of their own work. So right. the, the commission is hiring right totally O'Reilly Talbot and Oaken to do an analysis of the um, you know not the wetlands impacts themselves, but the the overall um, mitigation proposal that was. I, I just misunderstood what was passed at the last meeting. Okay. It was, so the commission basically just approved the, the scope of the third party review. And that that's just started, but no hearing has been scheduled at this point. Yes, I misunderstood who was going to do it from the last meeting. So too, too many, too many three letter acronyms to start with. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> I like TWA, truly worthless acronym. But uh, Rick, give me a call anytime and I'm, I'm happy to chat with you. What's the best time? Uh, anytime. If you don't, if you don't reach me, I'll, I will return your call. Hey, if I don't answer, I'm, so I'm most likely just on another call. Thanks for being patient. Well, thank you for your patience. Okay. Hanging out for the whole meeting here. Um, as I said, I've been involved in the federal stuff, so this isn't new. <laughs> well, we <laughs> move do quicker than they do. I do, <laughs> I do understand how long these meetings are and, and what you guys go through every week. And, I, I am in awe of all of you guys for doing it. Rick, is your concern primarily with the state listed waste site or the environmental permitting? Uh, I'm concerned that they're going to, uh, well, a lot of concerns. First of all, they're claiming that the Mill River is going to cause erosional things on the inside of a bend. All the erosion is going on on the other side of the river. So I, we're getting into the point where this shouldn't be discussed at a meeting if it's not on an agenda. Right. Sorry, Sarah. Oh, that's, that's okay. Um, <laughs> but it's, it sounds like, Rick, you're, you're just, you have concerns about all of it in summary. Yeah, I, just, I just want to calm down. I, I, I just yeah. want to know what, I just want to have confidence through knowledge. Not, not that you guys don't all know what you're doing. It's it just, just um, uh, I, I'm very nervous, as you can imagine, uh, about the effect that this is going to have on my property value if this goes down as a hazardous waste site. Okay. I mean, well, during the hearing process, there will be lots of opportunity for public comment, um, and you know, even during the third party reviews, things might might change from the current plans, but I, again, give me a call and I'm happy to chat with you about the- so it'll be multiple. I'm afraid it'll all happen in 15 minutes. That's one of my concerns, but yes, I'll give you a call and we can stop talking and you can go home, okay? All right. Anything else, uh, Sarah? Not for me. Okay, move to adjourn. I'll second that. We're out of here.